Hey everyone, happy Friday, June 4th, here with your Pro Members Weekly Video Update. Hope everybody had a good short four-day week and a good long Memorial Day weekend. Uh, starting with just taking a look at the markets, I'll give you a quick update on our day trades and then we'll jump into the alerts portfolio. Starting with uh, SPX, looking at this on a year-to-date basis, on a percentage basis, you can see the S&P is now up over 14% on the year just under all-time highs so after that little bout of volatility that we saw in may things are ripping back up to new all-time highs i would suspect we blow through that next week but we'll see uh and so that's the s p the nasdaq has not quite gotten back there but still just a hair under all-time highs up over eight and a half percent year to date uh so just a few percentage points under all-time highs in the NASDAQ. Obviously, the NASDAQ had a little bit rougher May than, than the S&P 500. Uh, if you look at RUT, the Russell's still, um, still a little ways under the all-time highs as well, but the Russell's up over 17% year-to-date. So uh, NASDAQ, the weakest of the bunch. I guess we could look at Dow as well, DIA, pretty similar to SPX, up about 15%, just under all-time highs. Uh, so we'll see which one of those can kind of lead the way uh, if we look at the VIX, at volatility, uh, volatility specifically, I mean, the VIX is down over 9% today, just getting crushed. If we look back, uh, you know, it's back down to that pre-pandemic level. And uh, so hopefully we can get a little two-sided action, get some, uh, get some little spikes in the VIX here and there. Uh, that always helps with getting in positions and taking positions off. And two-sided action is just, you know, it's a lot more fun, right? Um Bonds, if we look at TLT, bonds have really been just in a pretty narrow range over the last few months. So uh, nothing, uh, it's kind of at the top of that range now. Big, big update in bonds today. Uh, and then gold, uh, gold is taking a little dip this week, but has just been on a, a really meteoric run. Uh, silver, kind of the same, same thing, a little bit of a dip the last couple days here, but bouncing back today, and it's been on quite a run to the upside, so we'll see if that continues. Uh, but with that, let's jump into, let me give you a quick update on the day trades. Actually, a, a terrible week day trading, minus 34.52 on the day trades. Um, didn't trade, well, didn't post, didn't stream all last week, uh, so this is kind of the first week back, and unfortunately, uh, mostly the runners were the culprit, Mighty 90s, booked 956, did one pair trade for 223, uh, but had a uh, had a bad week on the runners. Part of that was uh, the market just slapped us, just the bad guys won. And part of it was I mismanaged a couple trades a little bit as far as held on to some losers that went a little bit too long. But uh, still, you know, grand scheme of things, this kind of the total uh, still in good shape and um, – you know, going back all the way since we started tracking these back in August, I uh, haven't had two losing weeks in a row. So let's hope we can uh, bounce back like we usually do. That is the plan. We'll be streaming every day uh, next week. If you get a chance to join us, we'd love to have you in there. Uh, all right, let's jump into the alerts. So starting with Tuesday, market was closed Monday for Memorial Day. So Tuesday, June 1st, uh, put on an iron duck in SPY. Uh, one of the reasons I did this with, with SPY is just because uh, for the similar expiration cycle in SPX, uh, they, it did not have five point wide strikes. So I, had to, I would have had to do 10 point wide uh, and that's quite a bit of capital. So I just did SPY and did six contracts. So if we take a look at SPY, go to our analyze tab. We've got a couple positions on here. One is a vertigo. Let's click off that one first. So this is our iron duck that we put on. So you can see prices uh, well up the beak right there. Uh, so got still got a chance to get back to the duck head. And this doesn't expire till 622. So got some time there as well. So we'll continue to manage that. Um, while we're here, I'll just show you the vertigo. So this is pretty much at break even on our P&L. So uh, you know, need a decent size move up or a decent size move down to profit on this. This expires next Friday, so we've got some time all of next week to uh, to see some price movement there, and so hopefully that happens. And then QQQ long put diagonal. So uh, we had a long put diagonal that we booked um, booked a profit on. We had we actually started with five contracts, took off three for over 100% profit, 
and then held the other two looking for a potential continuation to the downside in the queues. Uh, queues actually jumped, and so we ended up just letting our short remaining short puts expire max profit and held on to our lo remaining long puts. And then, and so this alert was the fact that they expired, uh, still booked a, uh, a profit on that long put diagonal in queues overall. SPY, so this was the vertigo I just showed you that we opened. Uh, entered this starting with nine days in the front week, 12 in the back. And then RUT opened an iron duck in RUT. Russell was down this day. The other indices were up, but Russell was down, so we entered a duck in RUT. Uh, did this one with 13 days to expiration. So let's take a look at RUT. Uh, Price is up here, up in the beak. So still a decent chance it could get back to the duck head, but uh, if not, you know this one expires 617. So we're just kind of layering into these ducks. Uh, when we see opportunities, specifically down movements in the market, that allows us to get kind of further away on the downside for our break even and get a little bit more credit and then um, and then just kind of layering these in. So put that one on in rut that expires 6, 617. I showed you the one in SPY that expires 622. So just continuing to layer on these ducks as we see the opportunities present themselves. Lulu did a closing trade in our pre-earnings double calendar. Uh, it was day of uh, the earnings. So we had to close this, booked a, a bit over 17% profit on that one. Netflix long put diagonal. So this is one that we, um, uh, this is one that we closed our remaining put. So this is one where we had, we took half off, booked a nice profit, held the other half, looking for some uh, continued downside, didn't get it. Uh, and then, um, so we held, we let the short puts expire, held the long puts, the long put made, uh, or the stock made a nice down move yesterday on Thursday. So we took off that uh, for, you know, uh, got back some of that premium. So I think net net on Netflix, I can't remember exactly. I think it was a, I think it was a small winner, like a $60 winner or something like that. But uh, so we're out of our Netflix long put diagonal. Uh, SPY Vertigo. So we had one that expired uh, last week with one DTE. So we went ahead and took that off. Didn't quite get enough price movement. I mean, if we look at a chart of SPY, we already looked at uh, SPX, but if you look at a chart of SPY specifically, I mean, we put that on and literally price did not move the whole time we were in that thing. And so we ended up just having to close it out. Uh, it took a small loss on that one. SPX closing trade. So this is a weekly double calendar. Booked a nice profit on this one today. Uh, we held this one to zero DTE just because of the amount of premium that was still in it. Uh, and it, it paid off good because it pushed up and... Did, you know the, the implied volatility skew didn't collapse on it, which was which is perfect. Uh, so we booked a nice profit on that one, uh, and then we opened up a new weekly double calendar. So let's take a look at that one. Did this one with seven days in the front week, yeah, seven days in the front and ten in the back. So if we take a look at that, got a couple positions here. All right, so the one that zeroed out, that's the one we just closed. Then we've got an iron duck, and then we've got our weekly double calendar. So uh, price has moved up slightly out of center since we put this on this morning, but still pretty well centered. While we're here, while we're here on SPX, here's the iron duck that we have, and this one expires on 612. You know, so we've got an uh, expiration on a duck at 612. Let me stretch this together for you so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, 612, so we'll move this 612. We still have a slight chance of getting back into the duck head, so we'll continue to hold this into next week. If price stays here or pushes higher, we'll probably just close that out early and book beak profit. Uh, otherwise, if we do see some downside, we may have a chance to get back into the duck head. So we've got this one that expires 612, got one 617, 622. So again, like I said, just kind of layering in to these. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of these other positions. We've got a long put uh, vertical in S&P futures that we're holding for downside. Price has moved out of range there, so we need some downside to get back in. In bonds, we've got this short strangle that we've been managing. Uh, we're up about 500 and some dollars on this piece since our last roll. Um, uh, a little bit of a move up today, but implied volatility is still contracting, uh, so we're getting some nice theta decay in there. In Apple, another one of our short positions, we've got this uh, uh, long put vertical 
Price is just inside the range there, so looking for some downside to benefit that. Same thing with DE. Price is just inside that range there, looking for some downside to benefit that one. Uh, quite a few of these verticals on DIA, just outside of range. IWM, just outside of range. Uh, McDonald's. All right, so McDonald's is a, uh, a long put diagonal. And we were looking for some downside. So we put this one on after that after that flush. We were looking for something that was not tech related uh, to get short. And so on that bounce, we got short right here looking for a potential continuation lower. Obviously, that didn't happen. This thing just kind of pushed and pushed and grinded higher. And so this thing expires today on the front week. So you can see technically tomorrow, uh, 6.5. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're just going to let those puts expire worthless, book max profit on those. So that's plus 560 uh, on, on the uh, short puts. And then we'll, we'll hold on to the long puts, which are at max loss. And so the reason we're doing this is because there's, there's really no reason to take these off. They're already at almost max loss. And so the only thing that can happen is if McDonald's does have a swift, sharp down move, you know, we might be able to get some of that back. That happened with us in Netflix, the one I just talked about earlier, that we that we got some back. And so we'll just hold on to those long puts into next week. They expire at the end of next week. And so if we do get a sharp down move in McDonald's, we could potentially benefit from that, but we can't really, uh, you know, we can't lose any more. So that's the plan there. NVIDIA, same thing. Uh, this is a remaining long put that was already at max loss. We already booked profits on half the position, and then we booked... Uh, you know, max profit on our short put. Now we're just holding this one. Obviously, this one expires now, so we'll just go ahead and let this one expire, and our NVIDIA position will be done. QQQ, we've got a couple positions here. We've got an iron duck in Qs, and this one expires 617 as well. So, again, we've got ducks in SPY, SPX, Qs, RUT. So we've got a good uh, diversification with symbols as well as duration. Uh, this one's hanging out right here in the duck beak, uh, and we'll uh, we'll hold this one until closer to expiration, or if it rips higher, and we don't have uh, much of a chance of getting back to the to the duck head, then we'll just close it out early. Otherwise, you know, we still got a decent chance of getting back. Uh, and then the other piece in the queues is a vertical spread uh, just outside the range, so holding that for that short delta exposure. I mentioned RUT, I mentioned SPX, mentioned SPY. Lastly, XLK, another uh, uh, long put vertical. Price is just outside the range, so looking for some downside to get back into range there. So those are all the alerts. Those are all of our positions. That's your update. Hope everybody has a good weekend. Got a full week of trading next week. Uh, we've got a lot of capital to deploy. Uh, just hoping for you know potentially a little bit of uh, pop and volatility to kind of start layering in some more positions. But We'll continue to layer in our weekly double calendars. We'll continue to layer in our iron ducks, and we will continue to uh, uh, add in some um, directional plays if the implied volatility stays low. So look forward to next week. Everybody have a good weekend. We'll talk to you then.